So just like on the residential units, they've got this eco link right, here. Guys, so what we're gonna do here is head up to Owen Sound, Ontario and look at an eco or heat pump rooftop unit. So we have Chris Phillips from Ken Phillips Climate Care. And then we also have Jeff Hunter, who is the distributor from Evolve Thermal Energy. So let's get to it and check this thing out. We're up here on a roof in Owen Sound, Ontario. And what we're looking at here is an EcoWare package unit. And I'll back up so you guys can have a quick look at it. I'll spin around here. There's Jeff Hunter in the background. Say hi, Jeff. Hello. <laughs> so just like on the residential units, they've got this EcoLink here. Basically what that does is it gives information back via an app. You can pull it up remotely and you can check performance of the unit, see how it's running. As they put in a rector seal. Now, this is the RSH50 VRM kit. So we have voltage monitoring and we also have surge protection. So if you have onboard circuitry that could be fragile to voltage fluctuations and spikes, this is a must. So we got Jeff Hunter back from Evolve Thermal Energy, and he's the distributor of the EcoWare products here in the area across Canada too, Jeff? Uh, Ontario and Eastern Canada. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you want to take us through exactly what this is and what EcoWare is trying to do with the light commercial market? So uh, last time I was on, we looked at the residential uh, split um, heat pumps, inverter, non-communicating heat pumps. So this is basically that same, uh, call it engine, a refrigeration system packaged into a uh, rooftop or side discharge uh, package unit. Now, this is technically like a residential package unit, but we're applying it in light commercial spaces as well. So it works uh, really well in that sense. And um, it allows us to get the performance from uh, the core inverter system and uh, low temperature performance in an application here in Owen Sound, Ontario. We got Chris from Ken Phillip Climate Care, and Chris, this is the first EcoWear rooftop in Ontario, and you were the first one to install one. So take us through the process of why you decided and how it's went so far. Okay, well, uh, as we all know, the big push for heat pumps is on. So we were looking for a product that, uh, A, we wanted support, uh, and B, that we felt had the delivery to do what we're trying to do, which is supply the heating and cooling. Uh, I've known Jeff for a lot of years, and Jeff introduced me to the EcoWare. So we did some research back and forth. I like the options on this. I like the good connection in actually our province so that we have support if we need stuff. So we opted to install this on a retrofit application. We originally had a York uh, five ton heat pump or uh, five ton gas pack in here. So now we've taken it out and we've installed this EcoWare. <coughs> As everyone knows in Ontario, we've had a heck of a cold winter so far and this thing seems to be doing exactly what we wanted it to do amazing can we go maybe take some of the panels off and go through each one yeah absolutely quick break from the rooftop guys if you're looking for a crm tool to help you run your business i'm using jobber i quote from it i invoice from it you can schedule with it and do all your dispatching it links to quickbooks i can see how much each customer owes me or doesn't to keep all my money in check they have great tech support through the chat and I've been using it for about three years now successfully. So if you guys are looking for a CRM tool, check out getjobber.com forward slash HVAC know it all. And I'll leave the link in the summary of the video too. In the blower section here, Chris, we have a, an ECM motor, but this is a constant torque, not a variable speed, right? That is correct. So you still have the energy efficiency of your ECM module. It's just basically going to operate to its set conditions. You're still getting energy efficiency and it's still delivering the air. We get a lot more choices as to where we can actually push it, but still the ECM motor. All right, Jeff, so I see this board here looks similar to the one in the residential system. Is it the same or is there similarities, differences? Well, I think there's different part numbers. There's probably two different part numbers depending on, we've got the um, two, three ton outdoor unit in the residential and then you have the four, five ton. So this would be that four, five ton main board. And as a distributor, uh, great thing for us is that we only have those two SKUs on the replacement board. But you think about it from a contractor's standpoint, you know, when you're training new technicians and you're trying to get them comfortable with different products, if they're looking at a packaged rooftop unit like this or they're looking at the residential split system, they're seeing the same thing. And we don't have multiple boards going on here. We have our power filter and then our main board. And so you can get real comfortable with that. The other side of that is, you know, with the monitoring system, the equal link that we have on here. So say I, I'm a senior tech manager, I'm back at the shop. 
I've got four or five technicians out in the field. They're installing heat pumps. And I can see online as they charge and install those units, I can verify that those are set charged right. And so the technician has more confidence in that way. And we have more confidence that our systems have been uh, set up right. So just very easy to get into these systems. Very simple layout. Um, much better for getting new technicians trained up on heat pumps. So we have our compressor section here, and then you can see that we have access to test our refrigeration side if we need to hook up any sort of probes or gauges. Uh, there's a blanket on here for the compressor to keep the sound barrier obviously as low as possible. Even though we have our ports here, we can access all this information on the app. So Chris, I wanna get your thoughts. Let's use the app rather than gauging up to check our pressures, only if we need to verify something, right? Yeah, absolutely, and that's the nice thing. This is kind of your worst case scenario. You're gonna use these to maybe verify that your transducers are actually reading properly. This is last step resort, but the point is that it's there. Uh, normally there's a plate on top of this that you can actually put your gauges on and not impact. So you don't have to worry about trying to fight with your gauge hoses through doors like some of the other units that we deal with. So this being a five ton machine, inside we have 15 kilowatts of heating. This is our electric heat strips, resistive heating. So we use this as our supplemental heat when the temperature dips. And we can also use this as backup if we have issues on the heat pump side. This is the compressor ramping up. This is the, the noise level it is at the moment. It's not very noisy whatsoever. What we've done in the last couple of minutes here is change the settings for defrost to heavy snow defrost because if we get driving snow and it gets all over the coil, we got to get rid of it. So we've changed that in the settings. How easy is that to do there, Jeff? Uh, it's just actually on the mobile app. It's, yep. uh, you go into the feature and you just click it, heavy snow defrost. You can do that remotely from your office or whatever, so it's pretty simple. So that's what we've done and we've started to take quite a bit of ice off of this thing through one cycle so far. After we came out of defrost and we went back into heating mode, we are now at 109.7 supply air temp.